that you want to you spend the rest of your life with me. Just like that, okay. So you and Brooke must have gotten into a doozy of a fight, right? Because, no, I'm, I'm going to pass, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pass on being second choice because I would rather be alone than be your consolation prize. It's not what you are. I'm not it's saying exactly that. exactly what I am. It's what it feels like. What is it? What happened with Brooke? Nothing happened with Brooke. It's not about Brooke. Now, Ridge, are you really going to look Taylor dead in the face with a straight face and lie to her. It's not about Brooke. Really? So this is what we're doing. We're just jumping straight in with lies. This is your master plan to get her back. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another bold and a beautiful review. Today, we have Ridge applying major pressure trying to get Taylor to come back to him. Brooke learns that Ridge went to Aspen. And Thomas's scenes have me second guessing if he really made that call. I'll explain. Let's get into it. It's about me. Finally, for the first time in a long time, seeing things clearly. Hold it, Ridge. That's what you do. You see things clearly until you don't. Get anxiety and, and feel like this. And I, I don't, just get out of my life. Don't, don't get all the way out. Like you can be, be over there, and we can, we can, we can, we can love our kid. Don't come here with these promises to me, Ridge. Please, because I've heard them all before. That just made me think of the lyrics to a song called I Heard It All Before that fits so perfectly with this. But she basically told him, you come around with all the sweet talking, making all these promises that you're not going to keep. And look at how smugly he's standing there looking at her. I think Ridge loves a chase. And Taylor is definitely giving it to him right now. And now you say that it's not about Brooke, so it must be about our kids. It's not about Brooke. I know it's not about the Can you stop? I'm here because... I love you, and I want to be with you for always. Do not follow me. So Ridge declares his love for Taylor and lets her know that he wants to be with her, and he thinks that she's going to melt in his arms off of this, but nope, she bats his hand away, runs out of the house, having him literally chase after her. And like I said earlier, I do believe Ridge loves a challenge. Taylor! Please stop me. Leave me alone, please. Please don't do this to me. I'm not letting you in again. I know that you down in the past. I'm not going to do that again. I meant what I said. I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I think my next question to Ridge would be, so have you ended things with Brooke? Are divorce proceedings underway? Does she even know that you're not coming home again? Because he's trying to make it sound like he's made this definitive choice, but there are a lot of loose ends that need to be tied up, which makes me think he's hedging his bets. So if Taylor says no, he can go back to Brooke. And then don't forget what we have going on in the background, which we'll talk about Later in the um, video, Brooke found out that he's in Aspen. We know that she's heading there too. So what's going to happen when she gets there? Trust me, I don't want to see Forrester's ugly mug anymore. He wants to see this, this work of art right here. Uh, yeah, of course, I want to be supportive of you with Katie. It's just... But you don't want me to keep popping up. Right, Stephanie and Taylor are at your place? Uh, yeah, they are. You know, I'm... I'm I wanted to offer it to Steffi first. Of course, I guess it doesn't mean the whole family would be using it. Okay, first of all, Bill is hilarious. When he described Ridge as an ugly mug and himself as a masterpiece, I cracked up. But second of all, why is he always showing up at Brooke's house unannounced to talk about Katie? But they did use this scene to let Brooke know that Taylor and Steffi are in Aspen. He told her he was selling the Aspen house, reminded her of the good times that they had there and that Ridge is not romantic enough to get a hot air balloon ride for or take her on a uh, camel rides in Dubai. So yes, he was there flirting with Brooke. I think those feelings are popping back up for uh, Bill. Ridge, what are you talking about? He's going to Aspen. Aspen? Yeah, I, I don't know. I was confused. I thought maybe you'd be on the jet, but uh, he's the only one on the manifest. Oh, my God. What? 
Brookie and Taylor are in Aspen. So now we find out how Brooke puts it all together. Eric was going to whisk Donna away to a Caribbean vacation. He called to set up the jet, finds out that Rich is taking me to Aspen, and Donna calls Brooke to tell her. So she puts two and two together. Right now, I don't know if she's thinking that Steffi and Taylor lured him there or something with the way she's looking, but I hope they give her an empowering moment too to call Ridge out for just leaving without selling her anything. But we know how these writers are, so I'm sure with both women in the same area, they're going to have them going head to head over Ridge, which they both, oh, it would be so epic if they both teamed up and told him off. Writers, please. Steffi, this is huge. Dad didn't mention anyone he was heading to Aspen. He's obviously there for mom. Maybe Dad's finally reached his breaking point with Brooke. Why now? You have to promise me you won't say a word to anyone about any of this, especially the person who made the phone call. I promise. No one's ever gonna know. There is a voice recording of the phone call attached. Play it. So after Steffi wonders what made Riz change his mind, Thomas starts reflecting back on everything that happened with the CPS situation. Now, this is why I'm second guessing again, like I said in the beginning, if Thomas actually made the call, uh, they're leaving us a mystery. I really don't know right now because I'm looking at his actions now and I'm looking back at the conversation that he and Ridge had in the office before Ridge left. She didn't admit to calling CPS. She didn't admit to anything. She lied to me again. Brooke lied to your face? I'm sorry, Dad. I don't know what this must be doing to you. Still, though, I mean, for her not to confess, we literally heard her voice. She said her name. I know. I know. So I'm confused right now because sometimes bold is very predictable. And then sometimes they like to throw a little curveball at us and give us a shocker. Which one is this storyline? Because predictable would be Thomas. Curveball would be Douglas. And at this point, I've changed my mind so many times. Initially, I thought Brooke because of her facial expressions. Today, I'm going back and forth between did Thomas do it or did he not? Because in that office scene right now, he was so shocked that Brooke lied to his face. Now, if Thomas did this, he too is lying to Ridge's face. Would they ruin the character Thomas in this way? after they've been trying to build him up all of these months. That is what I am not sure of because you never know with these writers, they can go either way. Now, when this first happened, I put a poll up on the community tab and it went back and forth between Thomas and Brooke for a while. Brooke was way ahead for a while, then Thomas caught up. Now they're like 1% between each other. But I also added Douglas because I saw some comments mentioning him and I was like, you know what? That might make sense. And when you think about how Douglas always wants Thomas and Hope together, if Hope thought that there was a reason to be worried about Douglas, wouldn't that get her over to the Forrester house more? Which isn't Hope spending more time over at the Forrester house now. We found out yesterday she's spending the night over there. So Douglas is a possibility that I'm not going to sleep on right now. And if Douglas did do it, he wouldn't get as much heat as Thomas or Brooke, but that's a whole nother conversation if he's making moves like this at his young age. So drop down in the comments and let me know, are you as torn and confused as I am or are you set on one or the other? Those were your major scenes for today. Please don't forget to like the video, share and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.